Thanks, Russ. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Tim Souther with Georgia Resource Capital. Um, Georgia Resource Capital is a certified development company. Uh, basically, we are a nonprofit entity set up by SBA to deliver the SBA 504 loan program. Um, that sounds complicated, but it's really not. We basically partner with uh, banks. Uh, most of the banks, if not all of the banks in this room, are heavily involved in SBA lending. That's primarily why they're here. Most hotels are done through SBA loans. But um, just have a brief program brief presentation about the 504 program. It's uh, not the most interesting topic in the world as far as the details of it, but it is a pretty relevant topic nowadays because of the types of lending banks are doing right now. But the, just a brief overview of the 504 program. Um, it's an economic development program specifically for fixed assets. So hotels obviously fit in perfectly for our program and they're actually over the past 10 years or so have been the number one use of the program in the state of Georgia. Um, nationwide I think they are a top five use of the program so hotels definitely are eligible for the 504 program and we do tons of them. Um, again it's a partnership between the lender, uh, all the lenders here in the room, Fidelity Bank, Quantum, uh, embassy, etc. They're all involved in, in the program and any of them can answer uh, questions about the program as well. But basically, again, not to be a dead horse, but it's a 50% first mortgage from a bank, a 30 to 40% second mortgage from us as the CDC, uh, which is the SBA 504 loan, and then 10 to 20% equity from uh, the owner operator. Just a uh, curiosity, how many owner operators do we have in the audience? I know I've seen tons of lenders, but okay, that's a good show. I think a couple of you are borrowers, but uh, anyway, moving on. Um, I think I've already covered that. There are approximately 250 CDCs in the country. There are an insane amount in Georgia. There's actually 12, which is uh, a lot more than most states. Um, but there's uh, other CDCs in the room, uh, Earl and Benta from Georgia Certified, uh, we're Georgia Resource Capital, there's one in Augusta, Macon, Valdosta, there's five here in Atlanta, so there's, it's a well-delivered well program here in, here in the state of Georgia. Basic eligibility for a 504 loan is owner-occupied, so that's why hotels fit so well in the program, is you really don't have any rentable square footage other than what you're occupying. So you're always considered 100% occupied, so you really always pass that test. Uh, obviously, hotels are for-profit, so you fit that test. Um, small business administration, these have to be, you have to be a small business. So a lot of you have been through the process and we gather all of your affiliate tax returns and you wonder why we're doing that. The reason being is we have to add up all of your affiliate net worths and net incomes and make sure they fit within SBA's definition of a small business. So it's not that we really like to get your 25 affiliate tax returns, but that's what we're doing behind the scenes is making sure you as a owner and all of your enterprise or your entire enterprise is considered small. Lastly, on the 504 program specifically, this is an economic development program, so we do have a job creation requirement. Um, hotels, don't be offended, but you always fail this, this test. Um, you know, you're, you're usually our higher dollar loans, but you're lower down the list on number of employees per dollars. Uh, so we always have to qualify you for a 504 loan uh, in different ways and I'll get into those. Uh, basically, there's several public and community development goals that we go through. And here they are. Um, the first one, uh, minority-owned business has to be at least 51% by a defined minority. Uh, Woman-owned, veteran-owned. Um, here in Georgia, we have lots of rural areas. You would be surprised what counts as rural. We use a USDA website to determine that, but there's parts of Gwinnett County, even parts of South Fulton County. I've had a project in Alpharetta pop up as rural before, so it just sometimes depends on what side of the street you're on to see if the, if the government considers a rural area. Another good one, and it's not necessarily a thing to brag about, but the 
metro Atlanta area is a base closure area. Back in 2009, uh, Fort Gillum was shut down, down in South Atlanta. So the entire metro Atlanta region is considered a federal base closure area. So if for some reason you didn't meet any of these other goals, we could throw you in as a base closure. So bottom line is, you don't have to worry about the job creation requirement. <laughs> So the, the structure of a 504 project, we went over the basics, 50, 40, 10, or 50, 30, 20, there's various different iterations, but we can cover any of the fixed asset costs. The purchase price, obviously, if you're buying an existing hotel, uh, if you're lucky enough to get a bank to approve a new construction hotel, we can cover the land, the construction of the hotel, the FF&E, all of the architectural and engineering costs, you know, pretty much anything except you know, for the operating expenses and the opening capital and things of that nature. And SBA has other programs uh, for, for those as well. Uh, another interesting fact, and stop me if you have any questions, I know I'm going through pretty fast, but another interesting thing about the program is we finance in the closing costs. So if there's $40,000 in closing costs, including, you know, the fee to pay U.S. hotels uh, for the appraisal, you're, you as the owner-operator are paying 10, 15, 20% of that instead of the full 100% of that because it's part of the total project. So we wrap in everything including 12 months of construction interest, a 10% contingency and all kind of good stuff to get to the total project. Um, at the end of the day, we're asking the bank to do 50% of that as a permanent loan. We're gonna step in for 30 to 40 and I'll get into the difference of when it's 30 and when it's 40. And then you as the owner are 10 to 20. So the equity contribution, this is the really the reason borrowers like the 504 program is that it's a lower equity injection than you would be required to put in if you're doing conventional financing. 10% is the bare minimum. Don't get too excited. Hotels don't qualify for 10%. Uh, hotels are considered special use by SBA, so you're an automatic 15% injection on every 504 loan. Uh, the only other difference would be if you're uh, a new business, a startup hotel, and you've got no experience in the industry, we have to bump you up to 20. So, so most, most existing hotel owners, or if you're um, you know, buying another property, you're gonna qualify for the 15% injection. So the bank's still doing 50%, we're doing 35 and you as the owner put in 15. So the other point on that slide is the equity is fairly flexible with SBA. It's, you know, as long as the lender's comfortable with what's being counted as equity, we're usually comfortable with it. Uh, land equity, seller notes, if you're buying an existing property and you just, you only want to put in 10%, SBA requires 15. <coughs> That seller can take back a note for 5% to make up that gap. Uh, lots of people have rich relatives. You can get gifts from them, uh, borrowed funds from your home equity line. And of course, everybody likes to see cash as the equity injection. So, and, and you can do any combination of those, like I said. So a structure example, say you were buying a $5 million hotel and there was $100,000 in various closing costs and bank fees. Um, total project 5.1 million. This shows the 50%, 35%, 15% breakdown of how a basic hotel acquisition project might look. The terms on the SBA loan, that's the other attractive part other than the equity injection is we offer very attractive terms right now. Um, we can now go up to $5 million total on a 504 project. So if you have your $15 million courtyard by Marriott that you're building, we can throw $5 million against that uh, total project. So SBA has increased the loan amounts dr dramatically over the past year. Uh, it used to be capped at $2 million, so they've more than doubled the, the loan amounts. And this would be your cumulative SBA eligibility. So if you have an existing SBA loan outstanding, you've got that counts towards your five million. So you've got so much left to borrow. Um, a lot of bankers uh, don't don't know, and we don't advertise it enough that the five point five million dollar energy efficient public policy goal 
Um, if you qualify for that, that project does not count against your eligibility. So if you do a green energy efficient project and you get a five and a half million dollar SBA 504 loan on that project, that doesn't count towards your eligibility. You can go do another one of those. You can do three more of those. So there's, it's a pretty interesting loophole that SBA has for you if you make your project green. And I'm doing several of those right now for large hotel owner operators that are doing multiple properties at the same time. And they want to use SBA financing on each, each project. In the past, before, this is something that's not even a year old, before last October, they would be limited to just one, one SBA project and would have to find financing elsewhere for their other projects. Uh, the fixed interest rate, um, the main difference between the 504 program and some of the other SBA programs, uh, the, the flagship program for SBA is the 7A program. Uh, the main difference typically is the rate structure. Uh, a 7A is, and I say typically, because there are some banks that do fixed rate 7As, but the majority of banks do variable rate 7A lending. Uh, 504 is a fixed rate product, and most of the time you can get your bank on the first mortgage piece to, to lock in that fi the first mortgage rate as well. So you can get fixed rate financing across the board on the project. And you see right there our rates are very attractive for a 20-year fully amortized fixed rate, currently 4.69% as of September. So that's fixed for the life alone. There's no fees on top of that. That includes all uh, SBA fees. So that's your all-in effective interest rate right now of under 5%. We, unlike some of the other programs, the government guarantee programs, do not require additional collateral. We take a second on your hotel. We don't take your house, we don't take your cars, your CDs, your, any, we don't take any of that stuff. Um, the only caveat to that is if your banker wants to take some of that stuff, we do have to take it. So if your bank wants to do a 50% loan to value first mortgage but also requires some residential collateral, then we have to take a second on whatever they require as well. But that's not standard in the program. It's pretty, pretty standard to just have a first and a second mortgage, and that's the only collateral on the 504 loans. Uh, these are long-term bonds, so there is a prepaid penalty associated with them. The investors that are funding these on the open market do expect a penalty fee if you pay off the bond early. Is the microphone breaking in and out? It sounds like it is. Sorry. Um, the penalty is not too obtrusive, though. It starts off right now under 3% if you prepaid in year one and works its way down over 10 years to zero uh, by year 11. The 504 loan is assumable. So if you are the type of owner that likes to sell your property after five years or three, three years, whatever, if you're in this current rate environment, you get a under 5% fixed rate and you want to sell your property in five years, that's a very attractive rate to have have your hands on for a buyer. They can assume your under 5% fixed rate financing. So your property would become instantly more attractive than other properties they might be looking at. The fees, okay, this is the, you've heard a lot of good stuff. Here's the uh, kind of the, the bad stuff. These are SBA loans, so there are fees associated with them. Fees right now are 2.65, 2.66% of the SBA portion. So if we're doing a million dollar project and our portion is 350,000, you're gonna pay 2.65% of that 350,000 as the SBA bond fees. Uh, those fees are added to our loan, so instead of borrowing 350, you might borrow 360. So you're financing that, that fee over 20 years at the effective interest rate. So it's in there, but it's financed into the deal. Uh, the ongoing fees, I mentioned the effective rate 4.69%. That includes the ongoing servicing fees that go to both SBA and us as the CDC. Uh, those average around 1.7% per year on your SBA loan. And those, again, so as you can kind of disseminate, the 4.69% breaks down to about 3% return to the investor that's funding the loan and about 1.7% uh, for ongoing fees. 
The 24-month trailing history on this 504 program on the 20-year bond is uh, a 5.36% average. Uh, as you can tell from the chart, uh, we've been in a declining rate market uh, all year. Our, our rate is directly tied to the 10-year Treasury bill. So the 10-year Treasury has been dropping like a rock lately, so, so is our, our rate. So it's been, been a good time to borrow for our borrowers. Okay, I think a lot of people are, are primarily interested in the new 504 refinance program. And just a little background, the 504 program up until March of this year, or late February, was it didn't allow refinancing. So you had to go through some of the other programs and get a variable rate or whatnot to, to refinance your property. SBA saw the need for a different avenue to refinance some of the conventional loans that were coming due that were done over you know, 05, 06, 07, three and five year balloon notes. Particularly here in Georgia, Georgia uh, has a, an obviously I hope you know, but they have an intangible tax if your loan term is 36 months or longer, so banks always do a 35 month term. So lots of loans are coming due, uh, SBA saw a need, so Congress passed a, um, a bill last September to permit a temporary two year window for the 504 program to refi conventional loans. And I'm sorry, that second bullet, it's a 15 billion in program authority, not 30 billion. Um, so we can go up to, if you own a property, you've got a conventional loan on it, we can go up to 90% loan to value. So you remember back early in the presentation, we limited you to 85% to get put in 15. On the refi program, all property types are eligible for the maximum 90%, so that includes hotels. Um, we cannot include any improvements, we cannot include any cash out, working capital, any of that. It's just a straight refi program. So some of the, the basic parameters for qualifying for that, uh, this new program, your debt, your conventional loan, and it's important that you understand that it has to be a conventional bank loan. We can't be refinancing your existing SBA loan, another HUD loan, or um, USDA loan you might have, this has to be a bank conventional loan that, uh, that you want to refi. So it has to be 24 months old, you have to, you know, you can't have gotten it last year and now want to refinance it. Uh, your business has to have been open for 24 months and you can't have any late payments for the last 12 months. Late payments defined as not uh, past 30 days due, 30 days past due. Um, exist, again, existing debt, SBA debt cannot be refinanced and uh, I was talking to somebody at the break, going over this rule, 85% of the original proceeds have to have been 504 eligible. So all that means is we can't be refinancing your working capital term loans, your, you know, any loan that wasn't originally used for fixed assets. They allow up to 15% just in case, you know, two years ago you refinanced and got 100,000 cash out. That's not going to kill your eligibility as long as that $100,000 is not more than 15% of the original note balance that you're refining. So just to go through a quick um, example of how a refi might work, say you have $3 million in existing debt on your hotel. Hopefully your hotel is still worth $3,340,000. And this refi program is once you consider a bank fee and appraisals and environmentals and any updated surveys and things like that, these are all round numbers, but $60,000 in closing costs. So you've got a total project of $3.4 million. Again, it's structured the same way as the regular 504 program. The bank has to be at 50%. So we're going to ask a bank, it could be the same bank. So you could be asking a bank to go from their current $3 million exposure down to $1.7 in exposure. Banker's going to love that. Uh, we're going to step in with a million three sixty, which is a full 40% of the current value. And then your equity in your hotel is your 10% injection. So there's no cash injection whatsoever. So in, a, in this scenario, you're getting loan proceeds of $3,060,000 from the bank's new first mortgage, our SBA second mortgage, and that's going to pay off your existing debt and pay all of the closing costs for you. 
So what you as the hotel owner get out of this is if you've got a note coming due next year, obviously things have changed in the, ho in the hotel lending arena and maybe the bank that you're with really doesn't want to renew, doesn't want that hotel on the books anymore. You know, they, they're under pressure from regulators to reduce their hospitality portfolio. Any number of factors. Uh, you're tired of having to renew your loan every three years. Various, various different reasons why you would want to do this. You, you want to just improve your rate to get that uh, under 5% fixed rate. So this program is set up to, to help borrowers that are kind of up against the wall they, they've got good history, they've had no payment issues, but the value on their property has declined just due to economic conditions. So this program will allow them to refinance the property. And just a, a little bragging, there's, there's only been about 150 of these deals done nationwide, and we've done about 12, 11 or 12 of them uh, out of the 250 CDC. So we like to think we're kind of experts in this refi program. I've worked with many guys many of you guys in the room on doing these projects and they're becoming more popular and they're gradually loosening the policy so to speak on the program we're expecting some more loosening of the program in the next couple of weeks to take away some of the ticky tax requirements that they're they've got stranglehold on the program right now but but just stay tuned it's it's going to be a good program it's already a decent program but uh, if you have a need to refinance your property, this is probably the best way to go right now. Does anybody have any questions on refi specifically? If you don't want to bring it up in the, the large forum, feel free to corner me and uh, ask me about your specific situation, and we're happy to uh, run any scenarios for you. Um, other refinance issues that come up. Uh, Excess equity, you would, you would think that uh, is out there too much nowadays, but believe it or not, I've had to kill more deals in the past six months because they have too much equity in the property. So, uh, not necessarily in the hotel industry, but in other industries. But, um, for example, if, if you've got a $2 million note and your appraised value is $4 million, the bank has to be at 50% loan to value, so there's no room for a 504 loan in there. So, these are, this refi program is really for the kind of almost over leveraged properties. Uh, if you have less than 10% equity, you can still get it done. We would have to take some other collateral. We need to get you to where the total collateral you're offering is at least 10% more, 10% uh, uh, equity in the project. So say you had a million dollar note and your appraised value is only 900,000. We're going to need to get you up to the point where you're at a million one in total collateral being offered. So you might need to pledge a two hundred thousand dollar piece of raw land you own, or you know you've got another hotel that's got two hundred thousand in equity. We can work with you in different situations to figure out what you can pledge to make the make the deal work. Negative equity works the same way. Um, you just need to pledge enough collateral to in in other properties to bring us to ninety percent loan to value. Uh, lender discounts. There's a lot of the larger banks, and I won't mention any names, but they're unloading their their large hotel portfolios, and they'll give you discounts to to get it off their books. So if they're given a discount, that by no means disqualifies your deal. We we like that. Obviously, we're lending on a uh, at a low loan to value on a property that hopefully at some point is going to return to its to its uh, previous value. So uh, lender discounts help the help the program. Uh, work cash outlay. If you're in that scenario, two hundred thousand dollars short, you could pay down your debt by two hundred thousand to make it work. Uh, and then I've mentioned additional collateral. Um, that's the basics of the five hundred four program. I've just wanted to relay a couple of real life examples that we've done just this year. Believe it or not, we did get. Uh, I think we've got two loans this fiscal year on new construction projects. Um, this is a, uh, a Hampton Inn we did uh, that's under construction right now. Uh, but this basically just goes through and shows you all the different items that can be included in our project and the financing that this borrower got. So he, this borrower owned other hotels, uh, so he qualified for the, uh, the minimum 15%. So he put it in a million two, and us and the bank involved financed 6.8. Uh, independent 
destination hotel. This is uh, one I did with some of my friends in the room, Mr. Kenzie. Uh, this was a large beach hotel down on the Georgia coast. They owed over $10 million on their hotel, and this thing's still appraised in this economy for over $16 million. So they had tons of equity in it. Uh, we wrapped in all the closing costs, and this kind of shows you how a higher appraisal can actually hurt the lender because they end up, because of the high appraisal of $16 million, they had to do $8 million of the $10 million needed. If that same appraisal had come in at $12 million, we could have done six for the bank and we could have stepped in with $4 million. So it's kind of weird. Sometimes a lower appraisal actually helps you as long as you still got 10% equity. It's actually better for you because you get more of your your loan on that uh, long-term fixed rate. But this guy, this guy was extremely happy. I think we cut his debt by something like 30%, 40%. I mean, he, he had gotten like a hard money loan in, in 07, so he was extremely happy to get a 6% weighted average rate with a 24-year term. Um, I think my clip art cut off half of my uh, thing there. $100,000 $100, in annual debt service savings. So. Um, this is not a refi example, but this is just kind of showing it doesn't have to be a straight purchase, doesn't have to be a straight refi. It can be a purchase with renovations. Uh, this is a project I'm looking at with another lender that's in the room. That's It's not approved yet, but we're going through the process right now. So this is a 5.1 purchase. They are going to convert it to a different brand. That conversion requires some improvements, pit list from the new uh, franchisor. Uh, new FF&E, we're going to finance the uh, construction period interest, a 10% contingency on the improvements, all the closing costs, and they're, they're doing all that for under a million dollars in, in equity injection. So to sum it all up, 504 program, the advantage on a hotel is 15 to 20% down payment, fixed interest rate, long-term financing to match the useful life of your asset. Uh, they're fully amortized. We don't have any on the SBA side, any calls, any balloons. So you're, you're, once you get your loan closed, you're good for 20 years. They are assumable. There are fees, but they're financed into the bond. Uh, it also attracts lenders. Lenders love being at 50% loan to value on owner-occupied commercial real estate. Their regulators love that as well, from what I hear. And if you work with the right CDC, it, it, it sounds complicated, but it can be a very simple process if you work with the right people. Does anybody have any questions? I have one. Yes, sir. Can a lender participate the first mortgage? Can they participate the first mortgage? Yes. Yeah, you can have multiple lenders on it, make up that 50% first mortgage, sharing first position. Anybody else? Thank you very much.